I have received a message from His Excellency the Governor-General recommending, in accordance with six, Section 56 of the Constitution, an appropriation for the purposes of Appropriation Bill No. 1, 2021-2022, and I call the Treasurer. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I present the Appropriation Bill No. 1, 2021-22, and the explanatory memorandum. The clerk. First reading, a bill for an act to appropriate money out of the Consolidated Revenue Fund for the ordinary annual services of the government and for related purposes. And I call the Treasurer. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Australia is coming back. Yeah. In the face of a once-in-a-century pandemic, the Australian spirit has shone through. Doctors and nurses on the front line, teachers and students in the virtual classroom, businesses big and small keeping the economy moving. Team Australia at its best, a nation to be proud of. Yeah. Mr Speaker, we have come so far since the height of the pandemic. Treasury feared unemployment could reach 15 per cent and the economy could contract by more than 20 per cent. This would have meant more than two million Australians unemployed. It would have been the equivalent of losing the agriculture, construction and mining sectors. But, Mr Speaker, today the reality is very different. Ahead of any major advanced economy, Australia has seen employment go above its pre-pandemic levels. Yeah. At 5.6 per cent, unemployment today is lower than when we came to government. This is remarkable because Australia's fate could have been so much worse. The United Kingdom, France, and Italy have all contracted by more than 8 per cent, Japan and Canada by around 5 per cent, Australia just 2.5 per cent. On the health front, the catastrophic loss of life seen elsewhere has been averted. Early and decisive action saved lives and livelihoods. We closed our borders, the Prime Minister established the National Cabinet, and unprecedented support is seeing the country through the biggest global economic shock since the Great Depression. JobKeeper kept 3.8 million people in their job. JobSeeker helped 1.5 million people without work and the cash flow boost supported 800,000 businesses and not-for-profits. And additional payments went to millions of pensioners, carers, veterans and others on income support. All made possible because we entered this crisis from a position of economic strength. But, Mr Speaker, it has come at a significant and unavoidable cost. The COVID-19 recession will see our deficit reach $161 billion this year, falling to $57 billion in 2024-25. With more Australians back at work, this year's deficit is $52.7 billion lower than it was expected just over six months ago in last year's budget. Net debt will increase to $617.5 billion, or 30 per cent of GDP this year, and peak at $980.6 billion, or 40.9 per cent of GDP, in June 2025. This is low by international standards. As a share of the economy, net debt is around half of that in the United Kingdom and the United States and less than a third of that in Japan. 
We are better placed than nearly any other country in the world to meet the economic challenges that lie ahead. Consumer sentiment is at its highest in 11 years. Business conditions reached record highs. And more Australians are in work than ever before. Yeah. Our plan is working. Australia's economic engine is roaring back to life. Since the last budget, almost half a million jobs have been created. Tonight, I outline the Morrison government's plan to secure Australia's economic recovery and build for the future, a plan that continues to protect Australians from COVID, a plan that creates more jobs, a plan that guarantees the essential services and a plan that builds a more resilient and secure Australia. It is a plan that is guided by our enduring values. Reward for effort, the power of persuasion and as aspiration and enterprise, upholding personal responsibility and always providing a helping hand to those who need it. Yeah. This is what the coalition stands for. Mr Speaker, our first priority is to keep Australians safe from COVID. In this budget, a further $1.9 billion is allocated for the rollout of vaccines. Yeah. Australians have already received over 2.5 million doses. This budget provides another $1.5 billion for COVID-related health services, including for testing and tracing, respiratory clinics and telehealth. In total, the Morrison government has committed $20 billion to the vaccine rollout and to strengthen our health system in the face of COVID-19. Mr Speaker, Australia's economic recovery is now well underway and we must keep the momentum going. In last year's budget, we promised hard-working Australians tax cuts, and we delivered. Yeah. We promised the largest set of investment incentives, and we delivered. Yeah. We promised more jobs, and we delivered. Yeah. And this was done without undermining the structural integrity of the budget. But, Mr Speaker, this pandemic is not over, and for lo as long as the virus persists, so will we. So tonight, we go further, announcing that over 10 million low- and middle-income earners will benefit from a new and additional tax cut, yeah. a stimulus measure that will support the recovery and build on tax cuts that we announced in last year's budget and budgets before that. Low- and middle-income earners will receive up to $1,080 for individuals or $2,160 for couples. More of their money in their pockets to spend across the economy creating jobs. Under the coalition, taxes will always be lower and hard-working Australian families will always be better off. Yeah. Mr Speaker, eight out of ten jobs are in the private sector. A sustainable recovery requires a strong private sector. Our record investment incentives are filling the order books of the nation. Over 99 per cent of businesses employing over 11 million workers can write off the full value of any eligible asset that they purchase. This has seen their spending on machinery and equipment increase at the fastest rate in nearly seven years. So tonight, we again go further, announcing the extension of these measures for a further year until 30 June 2023, so a tradie can buy a new ute, a farmer a new harvester and a manufacturer expand their production line. Yeah. Mr Speaker, when construction work began to dry up, 
Home Builder came to the rescue. New house starts are now at their highest level in 20 years. New loans to first home buyers reached their highest level in nearly 12 years. Home Builder has been a huge success. And our $2 billion investment in affordable housing is bringing on more supply. Mr Speaker, in this budget, our housing measures go even further, helping another 10,000 first home buyers build a new home with a 5 per cent deposit, supporting 10,000 single parents to purchase a home with as low as a 2 per cent deposit increasing the amount that can be released under the first home super saver scheme from $30,000 to $50,000. Yeah. Mr Speaker, under the coalition, home ownership will always be supported. Yeah. Mr Speaker, we know that some sectors and regions across the country continue to do it tough. That is why this budget provides a further $2.1 billion in targeted support for aviation, tourism, the arts and international education providers. More than 800,000 half-price airfares, support for more than 200 productions, grants to English language course providers and extending our small business loan scheme, which has already helped more than 45,000 businesses access low-cost finance. And we're also providing tax relief for around 1,000 small brewers and distillers across the nation. Yeah. Mr Speaker, small and family businesses are the engine room of our economy. They are at the heart of every local community. As they strive to recover, we need the tax system to work for them, not against them. So tonight we provide small business with peace of mind that an independent umpire will stand between them and the tax office when it comes to debt recovery actions. We will take these disputes out of the courts and let small business get on with what they do best. Under the coalition, small business will always be stronger. Yeah. Mr Speaker, we need to equip Australians with the skills that they need to get a job today and tomorrow. In this budget, we double our commitment to the Job Trainer Fund, supporting a total of more than four 150,000 new training places to upskill job seekers and young people at a cost of 2.7 billion dollars we will create 170,000 new apprenticeships and traineeships building on the 100,000 new apprentices we have already helped into a job in the first stage of the program we will help more women break into non-traditional trades with training support for 5,000 places and will provide 2,700 places in Indigenous girls' academies to help them finish school and enter the workforce. Yeah. And more STEM scholarships for women in partnership with industry. Tonight, we are also providing another 5,000 places in higher education short courses and better matching job seekers to jobs. We will invest in modernising employment services, including specialist assistance for young and Indigenous Australians. Importantly for those who find themselves without work, the government has strengthened the safety net, increasing the job seeker payment while enhancing mutual obligations. Mr Speaker, childcare is an important driver of higher workforce participation and women's economic security. In this budget, we are making a further and targeted $1.7 billion investment in childcare. This will increase the affordability of childcare for low- and middle-income families. 
250,000 families will be better off by an average of $2,200 a year, giving more parents, especially women, the choice to take on extra work. Mr. Speaker, our economic plan capitalises on the opportunities that will exist on the other side of this crisis. Building the infrastructure our economy needs for the future with our 10-year, $110 billion infrastructure program. Tonight we make $15 billion in additional infrastructure commitments, including for the North-South Corridor in South Australia, the Great Western Highway and Newcastle Airport in New South Wales, the new Melbourne Intermodal Terminal in Victoria, the Bruce Highway in Queensland, yeah. Metronet in Western Australia, yeah. highway upgrades in the Northern Territory, light rail stage 2A in the Australian Capital Territory and Midland highway upgrades in Tasmania. In this budget, we also invest a further $1 billion in road safety upgrades to save lives and a further $1 billion in local road infrastructure projects. Funding for these shovel-ready projects will be provided on a use-it-or-lose-it basis. And through the Building Better Regions Fund, we will support a further $250 million of regional community infrastructure projects, creating more jobs. Mr Speaker, under the coalition, Regional Australia will never be taken for granted. Yeah. Throughout the pandemic, we have seen how quickly Australians have adopted. Changing the way we work, shop and communicate. A trend that will only accelerate. Digital infrastructure and digital skills will be critical for the competitiveness of our economy, creating massive opportunities for growth and jobs. In this budget, we are investing $1.2 billion in our digital economy strategy, establishing a new national network of artificial intelligence centres to drive business adoption of these new technologies expanding our Cyber Security Innovation Fund to train the next generation of cyber security experts, and undertaking a digital skills cadetship trial which combines workplace and vocational training. Mr Speaker, Australia's manufacturing sector will be a key driver of future jobs and higher wages. That is why we have already committed $1.5 billion to expand manufacturing activity and create jobs across six priority areas, including medical products and clean energy. We backed in our modern manufacturing strategy with an additional $2 billion in research and development incentives. Australia has led the world with innovations like Wi-Fi, the bionic ear and a vaccine for cervical cancer. And we want to see more innovation commercialised in Australia. And so tonight we are launching a new patent box starting on the 1st of July next year. Under the patent box, income earned from new patents that have been developed in Australia will be taxed at a concessional 17 per cent rate almost half the rate that applies to large companies. The patent box will apply to the medical and biotech sectors, and we will consult on expanding it to the clean energy sector. Mr Speaker, Australia's effective management of COVID makes us an even more attractive place for the best and the brightest from around the world. To take advantage of this, we are streamlining visas to target highly skilled individuals when circumstances allow. We're simplifying our tax laws, including the treatment of employee share ownership schemes in line with the rest of the world. And we're improving Australia's competitiveness as a financial services sector and region in centre in the region. 
Mr Speaker, our strong economy enables us to guarantee the essential services that Australians rely on. In this budget, the Morrison government is providing record funding for schools, for hospitals, Medicare, mental health, aged care and disability support. Since coming to government, we have listed more than 2,600 medicines on the PBS, an average of one each and every day. This has put life-changing treatments within the reach of every Australian. In this budget, we fund new medicines to treat breast cancer, lung cancer, asthma and osteoporosis. Tonight, we announced the listing of Mgality to treat chronic migraines. Instead of costing $6,800 per year for treatment, it will now cost just $41.30 a script or $6.60 for concession card holders. The government is also providing in this budget new funding for endometriosis, research into preterm birth and genetic testing for pregnant women. Mr Speaker, the government is committed to ensuring Australians can access quality medical services no matter where they live. That is why in this budget we will provide higher incentives to rural and regional GPs for bulk build services, helping to keep more doctors in the regions. Mr Speaker, the NDIS has made Australia a better country, profoundly improving the lives of people with a disability and their families. A new wheelchair, home modifications, care in the home and transport to work. Today, 450,000 people are receiving disability support. In the last year alone, more than 100,000 people have joined the scheme. In this budget, we will spend a further $13.2 billion over four years to meet the needs of Australians with a disability. And as the scheme reaches maturity, our focus is on ensuring its sustainability and that it continues to deliver a high quality essential service for those who need it. Under the coalition, the NDIS will always be fully funded. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister called the Royal Commission into aged care quality and safety. It revealed shocking cases of neglect and abuse. Tonight, we commit $17.7 billion in targeted and practical new funding to significantly improve the system. Yeah. We will fund another 80,000 new home care packages, bringing the total to 275,000 home care packages that will be available. We will increase the time nurses and carers are required to spend with residents. We will make an additional payment of $10 per resident per day to enhance the viability and sustainability of the residential aged care system. We will support over 33,000 new training places for personal carers and a new Indigenous workforce. We will provide retention bonuses to keep more nurses in aged care. We will increase the respite services for, for carers, and we will strengthen the regulatory regime to monitor and enforce standards of care. We will upgrade essential aged care infrastructure in regional and remote areas around the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, this package brings our record investment in aged care to over $119 billion 
over the next four years. We are committed to restoring trust in the system and allowing Australians to age with dignity and respect. Yeah. Mr Speaker, everybody listening tonight knows somebody who is struggling with their mental health. Suicide is the leading cause of death in Australia for those aged 18 to 44. Tragically, over 65,000 of our fellow Australians attempt to take their own life each year. These are not just statistics on a page. These are our family. These are our friends. These are our colleagues. In every budget, we have committed more resources to frontline services. Beyond Blue, Lifeline, Kids Helpline. Tonight, we extend our support with a $2.3 billion commitment to mental health and suicide prevention. Yeah. More headspace centres to support more young Australians. Expanding this model to those aged over 25 with a new Head to Health national network of 40 centres. Increased funding for the treatment of people with eating disorders. Greater access to psychiatrists, psychologists and GPs through Medicare. Universal care and access for people who have been discharged from hospital following a suicide attempt. A new national suicide prevention office. And as the Prime Minister has announced, we will establish a Royal Commission into defence and veteran suicide. Mr Speaker, we have nearly doubled spending on mental health since we came to government. It is a clear national priority. It goes to the heart of who we are as, as Australians, helping those who need it most. Mr Speaker, in this budget, the government is investing record funding in education. We have already doubled school funding since we came to office. Our focus is on lifting student outcomes and better equipping teachers. Mr Speaker, tonight we also commit $2 billion to fund preschools with reforms to improve participation. Preschool is a vital time in a child's development and prepares them for the educational journey ahead. In this budget, we are also providing more than $19 billion in funding for our universities in 2021-22. And as a result of decisions made during this pandemic, this year there are 30,000 more places at Australian universities. Mr Speaker, all Australians have the right to be safe. The reality is that for too many women, this is not their experience. One in four women experience violence from a current or a former partner. This must stop and we must do all we can to end all forms of violence against women and children. Since we came to government, we have invested more than $1 billion to keep women and children safe. And tonight we invest, invest a, fair, a further $1.1 billion in women's safety, yeah. delivering more emergency accommodation, more legal assistance, more counselling, more financial support, including cash payments for those escaping abusive relationships more targeted services for Indigenous, migrant and refugee women and women with a disability. We will improve the family law system to better protect children, give victims of domestic violence greater access to justice and reduce the time spent in court. Mr Speaker, sexual harassment is unacceptable in any context. 
When it occurs in the workplace, it denies women their dignity as well as their personal and economic security. The government, in its response to the Respect at Work report, is strengthening laws, guidance and standards to prevent and to address harassment. Mr Speaker, we want all Australians to get the most out of the superannuation system. On average, women retire with less superannuation than men. So tonight, the government will remove the current $450 per month minimum income threshold for the superannuation guarantee. This will improve economic security in retirement for around 200,000 women. Our plan will also make it easier for Australians to prepare for retirement and to be more secure once in retirement. We will improve flexibility by no longer requiring older Australians to meet a work test before they can make voluntary contributions to superannuation. We will allow those aged over 60 to contribute up to $300,000 into their superannuation if they downsize their home, freeing up more housing stock for younger families. And we will also enhance the pension loan scheme by providing immediate access to lump sums of around $12,000 for singles and $18,000 for couples. Under the coalition, Australian seniors will always have more control over their money. Mr Speaker, COVID has not been the only challenge Australia has faced. Droughts, bushfires, cyclones and flood. This budget provides more resources to help Australians prepare, respond and recover from these natural disasters. A new National Recovery and Resilience Agency to lead our response to natural disasters. A $10 billion government guarantee to make insurance more affordable in Northern Australia. Yeah. Funding from our $3.5 billion National Water Grid Fund to make regional Australia more resilient to drought, building dams and irrigation projects. More than $600 million for community and household projects to mitigate the impact of natural disasters and $170 million to strengthen internet and mobile coverage in regional Australia, particularly in bushfire-prone areas. <laughs> Mr Speaker, Australia's biosecurity system protects more than $50 billion in agricultural exports and 1.6 million, million jobs from threats like African swine fever. This budget will strengthen border screening controls and improve our ability to fight an outbreak. Yeah, well Mr Speaker, a resilient Australia requires diverse and reliable supply chains. That is why we are providing additional support for Australian manufacturers of critical products and more funding to help small businesses and farmers expand and diversify their export markets. Mr Speaker, our industries and our regions depend on affordable and reliable energy. That's why the government is unlocking vast gas reserves in the North Bowen and Galilee basins and investing in hydrogen-ready gas plants. We're also shoring up our fuel security by helping local refineries to keep operating here in Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, we are the custodians of this great continent for future generations. This budget provides over $480 million in new funding for the environment, including $100 million to protect our oceans. We're also upgrading our recycling capabilities, creating jobs and reducing waste sent to landfill. Australia is playing its part on climate change too. Having met our 2020 commitments and on track to meet and beat our 2030 target. 
Australia is on the pathway to net zero, and our goal is to get there as soon as we possibly can, preferably by 2050. We will do this with a pra practical, technology-focused approach. Technology, not taxes, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. Already we have the highest uptake of rooftop solar in the world and are supporting major energy projects like Snowy 2.0 and Battery of the Nation. And in this budget we are investing a further $1.6 billion to fund priority technologies including clean hydrogen and energy storage. Our approach will strengthen the economy, create more jobs and reduce emissions. Mr Speaker, while well, we have been fighting COVID, other threats to our national security have not gone away. To keep Australians safe from these threats, whether domestic or foreign, the government is providing an additional $1.9 billion over the decade to strengthen our national security, law enforcement and intelligence agencies. We also need to be prepared for a world that is less stable and more contested. That is why we are investing $270 billion over 10 years in Australia's defence capability. The Australian Defence Force continues to protect and uphold our national interests abroad and at home. Our Defence Force are always there for us, and we are forever indebted to them. Yeah. Mr Speaker, this pandemic is far from over. Around the world, there are more than 800 thousand new COVID cases every day. The global economic environment remains uncertain. The euro area has fallen back into recession, but Australia is now well on the road to recovery. Our economy is forecast to grow by 1.25% in 2021, rising to 4.25% in 2021-22. Employment is at a record high, with 75,000 Australians in jobs than they, more than they were before the pandemic. And this budget will help create more than 250,000 more jobs by the end of 2022-23. Yeah. Mr Speaker, this budget secures the recovery and sets Australia up for the future tax cuts to put more money into people's pockets, business incentives to unleash a further wave of investment, new apprenticeships and training places to get more Australians into work, a $110 billion infrastructure pipeline to build our nation's future, and record funding to guarantee the essential services Australians rely on. Mr Speaker, the jobs are coming back, the economy is coming back, Australia is coming back, and this budget will ensure we come back even stronger and ensure that we secure Australia's economic recovery. I commend the budget to the House. Need the Treasurer to formally move that the bill be read a second time. Mr Speaker, I move that this bill be now read a second time. I thank the Treasurer. The debate must now be adjourned. The Leader of the Opposition. I move that the debate be adjourned. The question is that the resumption of the debate be made an order of the day for the next sitting. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. <laughs>